not come to order. Adequate leash notice of this meeting is provided by sending such notice to the Asbury Park Press, the Middletown Pact, and the Middletown Township Public School District website, and the posting of such notice at the August T. Minor Administrative Offices and each elementary, middle, and secondary school in the district. Roll call. This is Chairman Mr. DeFranco. Here. Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Donovan? Here. Mr. Little? Here. Mrs. Davies? Here. Mrs. Wright? Here. Mrs. Stella? Here. Mrs. Rogers? Here. At this time, I'd like to call up from High School North, Adam Hill. Dowd and Tyler Gunther, 
Sainz, Vincent Aramis, and Tiffany Burton. World Language, Ralph Abiel and Dylan Perry London. Social Studies, Adam Hill and Dylan DeFleece. Physical Education and Health, Jillian Haas and Melissa Gondieski. For Electives, Mike Ballas and Sean Gardner. Fine Performing Arts, Nicole Wolf, Jasper Nelson, Jordan Scobie, and Johnson. And for Extracurriculars, Brittany Laughlin. We also would like to congratulate our staff member of the marketing period, Mr. Chris Heller. And since this is uh, going to be my last report, I want to thank you all for this experience and just say how much of an honor this was to you for the past three years. Thank you. The honor was ours. Adam, I heard your name in that list. Congratulations. Thank you. Social studies. The honor really was ours, Adam. Congratulations. We will miss you. Good luck next year. We know you've had great things ahead. Thank you. Okay, from high school staff, Daniel Bustown. Digital. Hi, everyone. Uh, Middle High School South has uh, been very uh, involved in the AP test. It has served over 500 AP tests in the past two weeks. The AJSLA testing will begin our, in our high school for the 9th, 10th, and 11th graders Monday, May 20th. They're all looking forward to it. Um, the Middle High School South National Honor Society induction ceremony will be taking place on May 28th. And the Scholarship Awards Night will also be, will be taking place on the evening of June 6th. So many Middle High School South students were recognized earlier this event um, for over 700 sections, four subjects, college decisions. Day was on May 1st. Uh, many seniors walked around with their t shirts, sweatshirts. Uh, showing up their school. Um, congratulations to James Fenn, who's been awarded the rank captain at the Auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force. James also received the Mitchell and Earl Earth Leadership Award, uh, which levels in the U.S. Civil Air Patrol and the U.S. Air Force as well. Uh, Anne Marie Cross and Colleen Kelly both earned the Girl Scout Gold Star Award. Laura Posnick was the Middle Fence House recipient of Mount County Dine Strikers. Assistance uh, Free Carry Award. Junior Prom will take place May 17th at Jocks. Following that, the Senior Prom will take, also take place on May 31st, May 31st, I'm sorry, at the Short Casino. And Great Awakening programs will receive both of the events. Our fifth annual Food Truck Fest took place Friday, May 10th. Very well attended, very fun. Cheese burgers were very good. Um, three films from Middle Plant High School South were awarded the following um, at the Montclair Film Festival. One was Special Jury Prize. That was for Rosie of Jericho by Kelly Giblin, Tora Pater, and Courtney Bowl. Um, special Jury Prize, Experimental Tie for Transcendent, Morning Barth, Sophie Larish, Cassio Keith, Ashlyn Evans, Kim Winters, and Tori Pater. And the grand prize is a comedy for, for Clown by Keely Giblin, Mitchell Hahn, Julia Malik, and Stephanie Trigellis. Um, two films from the North High School South were selected to be screened for these schools across Ireland as part of the You Judge It program through the Fresh Film Festival. Three films from North High School South were finalists at the Basie Center for Teen and College Film Festivals with uh, Tori Pater. Taking up the prize of the best actors. Nine films from North Festival South were screened this weekend at the Hang On To Hang I'm sorry, Hang On To Your Shores Film Festival in Asbury Park. Thanks, Mr. Cohen, for including us. Congratulations to the following film for being selected at the 45th Annual New Jersey Young Film Filmmakers Festival. The event will take place on Saturday, June 8th at 6 p.m. on the grounds at the Thomas Edison Historic Site in West Orange. Um, Rose and Jericho, first place experimental. What's your favorite part of life? Second place experimental. Um, contingency is the third place experimental. Clown was a third place narrative. What's the point? It was an honorable mention. The sixth annual Middle High School South Film Festival will take place Friday, June 14th, 7 p.m. at the Southside Theater. 
The High School South um, Theater Arts Department, Falls Play, the Terminating of Furniture Lodge, has been nominated for the Basin Awards for Outstanding uh, Set Design. Mr. Kozak, Outstanding Costume, Mrs. Fisher, and Mrs. Mazza's um, Outstanding Supporting Actress, Lauren Barthen, Outstanding Lead Actress, Chloe Holden, High School South Spring Mutual, West Side Story, has also been nominated for the Outstanding Lights and Design by Pyron Shields, Mr. Kozak, and Mrs. Fisher. We will have, be having a student staff volleyball game on May 21st. Mr. Ragasayo and Ms. Castor once again hosted the Music in the Bars this month, which was, again, a huge success. We're very excited about that. Middletown South's next athletic side event will take place on May 28th. The softball team pitched perfect games this season. Senior Sophie Wilson versus Long Branch, and pitcher, freshman pitcher, Colt Mullane uh, versus Freehold, Florida. Middletown South Faithful team pushed an overall A North Division Championship on May 8th, finishing 12 and 2. The division winning their last five in a row. It was South's third A North Championship in a row within the last six years, and they've been a division uh, going back to 2012. Finally, Dr. George has been discussed um, kind of what uh, Middletown South and North have been um, introduced this year, which is a senior internship program. Um, this is a club. Uh, this gives an uh, opportunity for seniors to go out in the real world and experience things in uh, the fields. For example, me, I work for Hydrogen Blown. Um, so far, I've made phone calls for them, emails, spreadsheets, I've gone to events, you know, kind of been able to deep dive deep into what politics is all about. It's a uh, possible field I'd like to get into. Um, this is kind of open for all aspects uh, to do. Uh, you got to go to education, business, finance, um, law enforcement, anything that you kind of dream of doing, if you can get an internship, it's uh, yours for a ticket. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, for student matters and personal matters. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention. The Middletown Patch and the Middletown Township Public School District website, and the posting of such notice at the August T Minor Administrative Offices and each elementary, middle, and secondary school in the district. Roll call. Mrs. Camilleri. Mr. DeFranco. Mr. Donnelly. Here. Mr. Hannah. Here. Mr. Little. Here. Mrs. Minnies. Mrs. Wright. Mrs. Stella. Mrs. Rogers. Here. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. Level. 
Mrs. Uh, Tim, Ms. Timmons is going to be at the elementary level. She'll be housed at New Monmouth to help support that school, but all the elementary schools. Um, Ms. Kransky, she will be at the middle schools and uh, Dorn particularly. And Ms. Shrek will support the high schools. She will be housed at High School South that has a lot of our special education programs. But they each have an area of focus for the whole district, district wide. So Ms. Timmons is going to be focusing on all class programs in the district. Um, Ms. Gransky is um, responsible for the child study teams. And Ms. Shrek is the liaison to the curriculum department. Her expertise is in construction, particularly in like class support construction, the, those uh, areas. Um, so not only will our, our administrators have a clear line of communication at their level, whether it's an elementary principal or a middle school assistant principal, um, parents will have a clearer line of who they speak to when they have something that they want to discuss with a special ed person, uh, administrator. Um, do I miss anything Good evening. Um, I'm Kim Pegas. Uh, I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, and Human Resources, so I'll speak to those departments. Um, we have had many conversations over the past couple months with building administration, parents, students, uh, regarding our academic programs and student achievement, our school performance reports, and where we have room for growth, and where we can address uh, areas where students, you know, we want to help support them in closing their achievement gaps. In doing so, we have some slight reorganization in uh, the areas of curriculum instruction and human resources to again further support the buildings uh, and the students. Mrs. Caruso, uh, one of our district directors of curriculum instruction, she's going to also be housed over here at High School North, most specifically supporting the high school, both high schools uh, in promoting and articulating our academic programs with our guidance counselors to ensure that there is clear communication and support for our students and our families as they enter high school and they start uh, on a track towards either college or careers when they leave here, uh, making sure that our guidance counselors, she's been working with them to make sure our guidance counselors can support our students in making decisions that are best for their future goals. Uh, so she will be an important liaison between the curriculum department and the guidance departments at both high schools. In addition, she's going to be working very closely with our school principals to create action plans to address areas where students' performance is not where we uh, feel satisfied and where we know that there's areas for growth. Um, so she will be working with the principals and the teachers in ensuring that our curriculum, that our directors and supervisors create along with our teachers are being is being implemented with fidelity across all 17 schools. Mrs. O'Hagan uh, is going to be working very closely with principals in terms of their evaluation of staff and how we can use the evaluation uh, methods to help improve instruction. We are going to be collapsing one of our director of uh, curriculum roles, um, and that is after much discussion with our building administration, Mrs. Mrs. Walker, Dr. George, and the district directors and I, uh, we, in talking especially to our high school administration, we realize that there is a need at this point because of many of the things that Mrs. Walker just mentioned, uh, vaping, social emotional issues, uh, other issues that come up with behaving, with behaviors like engaging in vaping. Um, we need to have more support uh, in our buildings operationally and, and assisting our students, especially our disaffected students. Um, so we are going to be creating two new assistant principal roles at both high school, one for each high school, out here at High School North and at High School South. That's through reorganization, it's not additional positions, it's using our current administrators, it's collapsing a director of curriculum role, and it's uh, reducing one of our APs of guidance. So it's not any additional administrators, it's using our current administrative team and just reassigning them to other positions in the district. I want to reinforce that, because um, that is one of the challenges that this district currently faces with our uh, declining enrollment and our reduction in state aid. We have to learn how to address the needs of the district without increasing our budget or increasing positions. So um, we are looking to transfer uh, Mr. Virginio, who was very successful here as an assistant principal at High School North. He's going to be coming back to that role, working with uh, transitioning our freshmen, working with the Freshman Academy, um, as they move and transition from Thorn and Bayshore to North, 
and also supporting our guidance department uh, with a lot of the knowledge you gain working in curriculum when it comes to academic programs. Dr. Trudell, who has been, um, he was been a very successful high school assistant principal for many years here in, in Middletown, prior to being transferred to Thompson a couple years ago. Um, he also has an extensive background in guidance. He's one of our two administrators amongst our team who does have that specific area of expertise. So we are transferring um, Dr. Trudell, recommending the transfer of Dr. Trudell to High School South uh, to again work in a similar role as Mr. Virginia, transitioning our middle, middle schoolers, who he's very familiar with, having worked with them at Thompson, um, as the freshman academy assistant principal, working with our incoming you know, open houses for our seventh and eighth grade families, as well as supporting guidance, which again is his area of specialty uh, when it comes to students' needs in terms of 504s, INRS. If you've ever been involved in any of those things, you know why they're important to certain students. Um, and, and overseeing daily operations um, out of the guidance office. Anything else in terms of well, you did mention he's doing the freshman academy, so he'll be um, not only working regularly with the freshman class to transition them through their first year in um, high school, he will also work with the seventh, eighth grade open houses, and um, he'll have oversight of parent communication and naviance, and that's something new that um, eighth, ninth graders have to really be in and understand and use constantly because that's the communication between the uh, guidance and the students and the, the parents. Um, so we do recognize that um, Thompson is unique in its size, um, that no one can kind of deny that. It has a large student population. And transferring Dr. Trudell to work with um, that train, helping that transition from our current, with our current middle schoolers to high school leaves a vacancy at Thompson. And what we are recommending is um, appointing Ms. Fox, who is a very successful, very seasoned assistant principal currently at High School South, um, to work with Mr. Curry at Thompson um, to lead that building together um, and face the challenges that Thompson brings, again, because of its size on a daily basis. Um, so again, there's no increase in administration. It's the same number of positions. We're just reorganizing them to better meet the needs of the students, the parents, and the community um, and in supporting their academics as well as their social emotional uh, needs. So, yeah, currently we have two assistant principals of guidance at the high school level. Um, they both are currently doing uh, wearing many hats. In addition to overseeing the guidance counselors and the day-to-day -day operations of the uh, office in both high schools, they, a tremendous part of their responsibilities is scheduling and college assisting families and counselors with college planning. Um, in addition to all those other things that I just mentioned that Mr. Virginio and Dr. Trudell are going to be able to support. So currently, for example, Ms. Nicholas over at South is also overseeing, in addition to all those other things, scheduling, college planning, supervision of the counselors, she's doing the 504, the INRS, um, the independent learning opportunities, home instruction. Uh, so right now, we're going to really focus her in on the role of scheduling, and supporting families and students with college planning, and therefore reducing one assistant principal of guidance is why the two new assistant principal roles, one in each school, is going. They're going to fill in that extra support um, of the guidance department uh, through the roles I mentioned. And, and one of the really important things that we thought about when we created this was to get consistency between the two high schools so that things are done the same. Um, you know, the guidance counselors operate under the same protocols and. We thought that was really important that students at both schools were getting the same messages about you know colleges and programs and classes and, and um, just to keep that consistency. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more uh, topic that we'd like to address. I want to ask Mr. Taylor to explain um, non renewal and how that works. Thank you. Maybe there's one. Um, as a general proposition, uh, assumes the New Jersey statute uh, every year on before May 15th, uh, the chief school administrator or superintendent has an obligation uh, to notify uh, all employees, uh, specifically non-tenured employees, of one or two things. Either his intent to recommend to the Board of Education a renewal of their employment contract for the next school year and or alternatively to notify that individual employee of his intent not to recommend renewal of the employment contract for the next school year. 
um, employee when they are hired by a local board of education or hired on an annual basis until they get tenure if they are in a tenure eligible position. Prior to receiving tenure or they're not eligible for tenure, they are limited to a one year contract. There is no entitlement to renewal of that contract uh, on an annual basis. Uh, if the employee is given a notice of non renewal, there is no action before the board. The Board of Education does not vote on a non renewal. It is purely the superintendent's decision with his administrative team uh, whether to offer that employment subject to the board approving it. If the employee is not renewed, again, the board does not vote on that. However, if an employee does receive a notice of non renewal, they can request what's called a statement of reasons, which will be an itemized list of why the employee was not recommended for renewal, whether it be fiscal or financial constraints in the district, performance, etc. After receipt of that statement of reasons, the employee can request what's called a balancing hearing, which is an informal appearance before the Board of Education and close executive session, at which time that employee can essentially plead their case, uh, explain why they think the, the administration got it wrong, why they think the administration and the board should be considered, and why they think the board should, in this instance, in the only instance, the board should uh, vote to essentially overturn the superintendent or offer them a contract in the next year. Um, that's the only time the Board of Education, the elected board members, can vote to hire someone without a recommendation of the superintendent. Uh, but the important thing is, again, we had a public comment period. Uh, the first one is typically for agenda items only. Um, if, it's, if your comments are about a non-renewal of someone that you may have heard about, that's not on the agenda because there's no board action for non-renewals. Thank you. <laughs> um, at this time, I see that there's a lot of students in the audience. I'd like a motion um, to have a short 15-minute um, comment session for just the students in the audience. Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion? Um, I think that it's important. Um, you know, we have a really nice turnout here. This is the sort of thing um, that, uh, you know, actually makes me feel proud of Middletown to know that our uh, community comes together like this, uh, the students come out. Um, I also think it's important that we don't keep everybody here as late as this meeting might go. And so uh, I believe the right thing to do is to put in this uh, special comment period so they can take advantage of it um, and, and state, their, um, uh, state their case um, and be heard by the Board of Education. You're talking about students and not students? Just right now, just students. This, just would be, this would be for students only. Oh, yes. I have a question. Is this so they can talk about anything? <coughs> Not, it doesn't matter what's on doesn't the agenda. It doesn't have to be on the agenda. Okay, um, what about these adults that are standing here with their students? The adults will have to wait till the end of the meeting uh, to comment on non agenda items. If it's an agenda item, so something like the organizational chart, they can comment after the children. Uh, so that, that is the ordinary standard protocol for this Board of Education um, since I've been representing you to my knowledge for years and years on end. I think she's just trying to clarify so everyone is aware of the adults. Yes, the adults are absolutely welcome to speak on non agenda items just later so that we can get other things um, done. We have people who want to speak on other things that are on the agenda. Okay, so um, all in favor? That motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. So if we could have the um, children who would like to speak, the students, come on up and speak. I know a lot of you don't want to have meetings often. We do have a three minute limit for each speaker so we can hear as many people as possible. So just try to keep the three minutes. Thank you. My name is John Falcon. Um, I'd like to speak on the uh, this is not renew the contract of Mike Lassi. And um, throughout the past three years, I've known Coach Lassi. He's coached me on the hockey team before. And I've noticed a couple things about him these past years. One, I've never seen a man put more effort and heart into everything that he does, more than him. Every time we've gone to the local rank to go speak to the special needs students at the elementary schools, I've never seen the ear-to-ear -ear smile come off the face. And that's just how he is. He just, his day is made by making other people happy. Uh, number two, I can honestly say that he's one of the nicest 
human beings that I've ever met in my life. Um, that's not an exaggeration. And um, at hockey trials my junior year, I had an injury immediately. Went right to the hospital. Before any of any any people in my family even texted me from my dad how I was doing. He was the first person to text to see how I was doing, if I needed anything, how I was feeling. And uh, he's a very caring man. And not only that, but he's extremely easy to talk to about anything. Like it doesn't matter what it is, sports, not sports, personal issues, you can definitely go to him. And uh He'll definitely give you a heartfelt answer of what it is. He'll sit down and think about it, and he's going to give you what he thinks is going to be the best option for you. That's just how he is. If you ever mess up, like I said, outside of sports, on sports, he's not going to yell at you. That's not how he is. He's going to talk to you. He's going to tell you what you did wrong and what you can do better the next time. And uh, the last thing I noticed that he really does put himself. I mean, not keep with other people in front of himself. Uh, he's the first person to ask if you need anything. There's anything he can do to help you out. He always wants to be there for you. And he wants to make sure that everybody's doing okay. Especially his students. And how I deal with children, both between my job and the child development that I stay in and day out. And talking to these parents, I can definitely tell that they want what's best for their kids. And what's best for these kids, if you ask any parent or what's to your parents, you want somebody that's going to put in the effort and the time and who's going to care about how their child is doing and their well-being, as opposed to just someone who just wants to be paid. They don't really care that much. And Coach Mike Lessie is definitely the man who's going to put in the time and the effort because he really does enjoy what he does and he really loves it. Thank you. Mr. Lessie is the best morning 
most teachers I have ever had at New Monmouth Elementary School, and I look forward to every Monday and Friday that I see. Educate them, and I know that's not what you want. 
Um, but I don't see any dotted lines. I don't see any hard lines. It's, it's, excuse I me, uh, if we feel that the speaker has their questions, make their comments first, and then the board and our administration will respond, that will get their opportunity to give them your five minutes, and then we can respond to the public. There, there's just a heck of a lot of talent in curriculum, as well as other departments. I don't mean to demean a different department, but for somebody who has a child that is fully included, or trying to keep her child fully included, she's kind of homeless because the principals don't necessarily take the lead. Um, you know, she's under special ed, but in my mind, she's a general ed student. So it's, it's very confusing. I don't, I don't mean to criticize anybody. I just, I don't understand the tie-in to curriculum and, and would, would just like you guys to think about that. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, I need a motion to approve the following request for proposal for strategic planning RFP for 2019. I'm sorry. Uh, the RFP 19-02 to Princeton Public Affairs Group. So Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Okay. Moving on to number 10, recommendations of the superintendent. Moving on to the personnel, the personnel report. I need a motion to approve items number one. So it's page one of one on the personnel report. I need a motion to approve number one through four. So moved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. On the agenda, uh, number 10, I need a motion to approve A2, two through nine. Uh, to approve number two through nine, I'll do 10 separate. So moved. <coughs> Discussion? Yes. I am going to go down number six, the chance for us to Um, Although I would, I'm, um, Mr. Tudell was a high school nurse before, he was an excellent high school administrator, excellent. But my concern is Thompson is our biggest middle school. I'm taking him out of there now, I feel, my personal opinion, that that's detrimental. I think that Mr. Curry and Mr. Tudell I've done a great job keeping Thompson together with the overcrowding. We, we should really be thanking them more than we do because they have kept that school together, put our kids first, and I think that this move is going to be a bad move. So I will be voting no on that one. Okay. Um, I need a motion to approve number 10. Oh, sorry, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, opposed on number 5, number 6, and number 9. I'm voting no on number 5 and 6. If, if you could um, uh, include a roll call for the personnel for your appointments and your reports that was just clear. Um, no one of those definitions are listed for all of those. Beginning of the first half. Wait. It's in the first half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am voting no five and six. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. 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 
on. I need a motion to approve number 10, A through M. So moved. Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Little? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mrs. Wright? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mr. Wright?
increase, we have elementary guidance in addition to what we're doing. But just in the high school. No, no. Thank you. But just to go, okay, okay. Ten years ago, we, we came across the position that you, you authorized to have a guidance council or have a day where we have a set. And, you know, you, I know that you wanted to entirely have you given us that position, but we asked for it. And the following year, when it came to the recommended again, you explained that two principals had come to you and said, look, we are okay with one guidance council. Is that still the same? The principals are all okay with your recommendations here? Uh, yes, the, the principals are aligned with our recommendations. That's correct. Uh, they, they were, this, as pointed out by Ms. Vegas, I think that's where you're getting in closed session. This was not done as a, um, a top down central office uh, um, move. Actually, we met with the high school principals and with the principals <coughs> to discuss the moves that. Uh, yes. I still want to on a record that I was well aware it wasn't the science counselor position, it was supervisory, but I still think that that supervisory position in each high school is important for the guidance counselors to be working with that assistant principal and guide our children and solve problems. I don't see where these new um, assistant principals are going to be having time to fit into that position. And I think it's going to be one big task for Mrs. Two, two things to clarify that. One, there's going to be one additional assistant principal in each high school to assist taking positions offline from central office and directors and supervisors and putting them at that level. And the other thing, that that's really why it's important for Dr. Trudell to uh, make that move to high school guidance, where in high school guidance, as students prepare to go to college, um, it is very important uh, you know, for us to have as much oversight as possible. So his expertise is really going to be needed at that level, and that's why the administrative team as a whole has made that recommendation. Um, I'm going to take my vote back because I'm really good with the guidance council. That was my point. Okay, I understand you. Thank you for clarifying it again. I really took it as a guidance council, and I was very upset with the guidance. I think it's a lot of work for Mrs. Nichols. I think she's been fantastic. Okay, I don't need to talk about it. Uh, but I'm going to take it back. I'm going to be watching. I'm telling you, I'm going to be watching, complaining if they don't get it. Because you know it's a big thing about high school. They need help. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. Abstention. That brings us to the end of personnel, all right? Okay. At this time, I need a motion to adjourn the special voting meeting and open the pre-meeting workshop. So, so moved. moved. Second. Discussion. Do we, um, I know that this is a long night, uh, but we were to take any sort of break between these two? Just go ahead. Well, let's do it. Let's go ahead. We'll be able to take a break. No, no, it's good. Okay. Um, all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. <coughs> all right, at this time we'd like to have a presentation of our district goals and strategic plan update.
develop through those types of learning practices so that we took a look at that and how engaging it is for our students and what we did is that we bridged it up into the new curriculum in the ninth and tenth grade when we rewrote it so students will have more choice besides the core novel in our high school classes starting in ninth and tenth grade uh, so we are scaffolding that up into the high schools and so that our students in the high schools will see more um, book club choices along with independent reading choices as well. Hi, Chris Virginia, K-12 Director of World Language Business Education and Social Studies. Um, I'm going to speak for a minute regarding college and career readiness. Um, so we've been doing a number of different things to try to prepare our students for life outside of schools. Um, that includes um, some of the things that you see up here. Uh, we were able to establish a partnership with the New Jersey Council for Economic Education. Um, this partnership is going to afford us the opportunity to learn um, from professionals um, in the field with respect to some of our career readiness, uh, career exploration, um, as well as financial literacy. They're going to be providing us with free professional development so our teachers, uh, especially at the middle school level, who are now going to be teaching certain financial literacy standards are going to be well versed in those, um, in addition to um, some of the other things you see up here. Um, we also launched our senior flex option here at the high school, which again, we, you've heard some of my colleagues discuss some of the flexibility student choice. Uh, this gives our students the options of um, exploring opportunities outside of school if they've earned the requisite amount of credits. Um, we took a real hard look at our advanced placement program, um, which was one of the most significant changes that we were able to make this year um, as a team. We really sought to have an all-inclusive um, program so that any student that is academically prepared and wants to challenge has the opportunity to take some of our most rigorous courses. Um, and we're, we're proud to say that at both High School North and High School South next year, we have roughly 200 freshmen that are going to be taking um, AP World History. So we're, we're really proud of that. And then last but not least, we are uh, currently collaborating with um, G Harness Instruction to identify areas where Middletown students may be able to intern um, with this company so that they're able to experience all facets of um, a very important industry. Thank you, Chris. I'm Steve Graziano, Director of, Director of Fine Performing Practical Arts here in our great district. I'm um, here to talk about a few of the issues that we've had since January uh, that is in place here. Uh, one of the biggest things we've done is we're growing our academy, uh, our academies that we have here. So in uh, January, we accepted uh, applications from new students. We have uh, more than doubled our academy from this year to next year. Uh, we have over 50 accepted applicants into our academy for next year. Um, we have a, a 20 something plus now. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we have maintained and brought in about up to 12 plus guest speakers uh, to our current academy and uh, they, they uh, address them in our transition period. And um, really most exciting, we are bringing in the Dance Academy next year. We're adding our sixth track. And uh, thanks to our collaboration with the Middletown Art Center, uh, we'll be using their facility for the, uh, the dance uh, studio. So we're very excited about that, and we're excited to welcome our new students uh, that are going to be coming into our academy here next year. Thank you. Hi, Sharon Simmons, Director of Special Class Programs. Um, so in the beginning of the year, we started um, creating paraprofessional role workshops that we identified, the parents identified they wanted to support in. Some of these were roles of paraprofessionals, ABA training, how to handle typical behaviors, how to take data, um, to supporting the workshop model. We are currently working to explore an opportunity with Rutgers University where we would look at evidence-based practices of behavioral sports interventions um, for, student, for a one-to-one -one coaching model with paraprofessionals um, with the psychology department. So, that's the same. <laughs> We're also looking to explore the option to expand the SLE program and create tower gardens um, where the general students would learn how to grow and plant different, um, different plants and vegetables of their choice 
and um, work with Ms. Shrek and the high school. Hi, Danielle Shrek, Supervisor of Special Education Instruction. Um, we're happy to say that we're going to be increasing your right to support in the upper elementary grades. Um, we're going to be working very closely, continue to work very closely with the uh, content directors in um, providing all professional development for in-class support teachers, research teachers, LLT teachers, and the autism, et cetera, um, to make sure that the programs are running smoothly across all um, settings. Um, and um, we're, we're looking to also include um, more additional lab sites within the middle school and also the high school. I'm going to speak on behalf of the middle school administration tonight. Um, as you know, we launched our new middle school schedule this year. We received a tremendous amount of positive feedback uh, regarding the restructuring of the middle school day uh, to a more consistent schedule uh, that students don't have to fret about when they walk in the door. What day am I on? Uh, what classes do I have? And the mic is phasing out. I think we talked too long already. Maybe that's a cue. Um, <coughs> So right now what we're doing is at the end of the year, we've uh, uh, set aside some time to meet with teacher representatives, with administrators to talk about areas that have been successful and other areas where we can continue to make improvements. Um, we have been very uh, pleased with the development over the course of the year of the advisory period. Um, it started off, we knew it was going to be new, we knew it was going to take time to um, improve upon it and what it offers our students. Uh, we, can, we look forward to continuing those efforts next year. Just a quick update on future ready certification. We are getting ready to submit all of our evidence. Um, by the end of June, the EdTech team has been working very hard to collect it. One of the things that I think we're most proud of is um, as a district is that we have over 20 teacher leaders volunteering on the Future Ready Awards <coughs> Committee with the NJDOE and school boards to score other district submissions. So that's really special as an educator to be able to see other districts across the state and what they're submitting as evidence so we can learn and grow together. Um, uh, the partnerships we've also developed through this process have been invaluable. We've been learning from other schools, they've been learning from us, and um, you know we hope and cross our fingers that we get to the next level. So um, we have launched um, a brand new professional development schedule this year, and we have met with a great deal of success in doing so. Um, we, we rolled it out in September, but did add a couple of new things as the year progressed. Um, we launched for our, our teaching staff the ability to choose independent study options, where they get to dictate the course of what they would like to learn based on their own needs and their own interests in the classroom. Um, it is in line with, with exactly what we promote for our student learners in personalized learning and is a great way for us as a district to be able to expand the capacity of over a thousand employees. Um, the other piece of that, which will be moving forward with this, the, the finalizing for this year and moving forward with next year is the idea of micro-credentialing and adding that in as an option for independent study. Um, the other large initiative, which is in line with, with growing the capacity of our teaching staff at the secondary level for personalized learning, is our job embedded PD initiative, where we have had participants at the high school and middle school level um, have release time during the school day to not only visit other classrooms, but more importantly, collaborate with their colleagues about instructional strategies and uh, initiatives that are happening. And the feedback that we've had from that has been really tremendous. Um, it is very rare in education that you get the opportunity to step outside your classroom doors and have real time in a colleague's classroom. So it has been our dedication as a district to try to provide the time and autonomy for teachers to have that opportunity because we are being as big as we are, our own best resource. So we're excited for these things and the continuation of these initiatives into next year. Good evening, my name is Devin Orozco. I'm the Director of Science, Health, and Physical Education for the district. Um, hopefully you are very familiar with a lot of the initiatives on the board. As you can see, a lot of different initiatives in our individual schools that pertain to supporting a positive culture and climate in our schools. 
things like the Choose to Be Nice program has really taken off and grown lately. Um, we have some great self-profit videos out there about our kids um, supporting one another. Um, but specifically, I want to mention how we are expanding a responsive classroom initiative. So this year, it's really um, taken off in a few of our elementary schools. To note uh, would be Port Monmouth, Ocean Avenue, Bayview, and Middletown Village. And they have really uh, piloted the program for us this year, so much so that we are getting ready to train all of our elementary school teachers to be able to do the program in their classrooms next year with the hope that we are going to, you know, again, support that positive school culture and climate. And also it's going to help us hit those health standards of social and emotional health and wellness because we know that those are some of the standards that are tremendously important to our students.
continue to analyze our student population trends in order to make sure our facilities are equipped to handle those enrollments and to manage them throughout the district. We are continuing to uh, monitor the enrollments by school. If you come to our board meetings with any regularity, you will see that periodically we do update uh, the enrollments and, and where we stand with each school. Uh, we also use that data to drive our schedules and our staffing for the upcoming year. So that's something that we're in the process of doing right now. Uh, this chart and the subsequent slides break out the enrollments in detail and what we've done is do a comparison between June, the end of last school year, and where we're at right now. So on the elementary level, uh, you can see down at the bottom uh, that we have actually uh, decreased by 55 students overall at the elementary level. If we move to the next slide, uh, the middle school, at the middle school level, uh, we are down 127 students from the end of last year. And at the high school level, we are up 145 students. Uh, the district total, if you go to the next slide, uh, overall, uh, we are down about 37 students. Uh, so what we have seen over the past um, year or so is a shift of students out of the elementary and even out of the middle schools and into the high schools. It, it, so uh, we are seeing decreases at the elementary and middle school level. Uh, we are getting some increases out at the high school level. But overall, the district enrollment is not increasing. As, as a matter of fact, it is still uh, ticking down. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, well, what we also do in the process of doing our scheduling and, and budgeting for next year is take a look at the, on the elementary level, the current and projected section analysis. So as you know, we have 12 elementary schools. We have um, normal K through five. Uh, so looking at our, our student totals for this year uh, versus the projected for next year, uh, we have 3,873 uh, students uh, this year. Currently, 3,794 projected for next year. Uh, if you go down further in the slide, the anticipated actual number of sections that we have staffed for this year is 186. Based on student enrollment, that number could actually be 151. We're not able to do that because of the structure of our elementary schools. Uh, so the differential there is 35 sections that we are running across the district uh, that would be in addition to what we would need based on the enrollment. Uh, projection for next year uh, would be 175 that we would be actually staffing. Uh, but based on the enrollment, we would need 147. So the differential uh, for next year would be 28 sections that we would be running across the district that if we were basing it purely on enrollment, uh, would, you know, we might not necessarily have to go. So obviously, um, our most important uh, obligation is to keep our students safe. So one of our uh, goals was to continue to collaborate with local, county, uh, and federal officials. Um, and our local, Mr. McGuire's uh, director of school security, um, and myself attend monthly meetings out of the prosecutor's office um, for the, uh, it's called the School Security Directors Association. Um, it gives us the time to meet kind of debrief about any of um, relative situations that may have occurred recently, kind of um, come up with a game plan. Also, uh, one of the uh, main agenda items out there is looking at a uh, regional uni uh, reunification plan. So it's something that we, um, we attended a professional development opportunity on from um, uh, Chester County in Pennsylvania. They did a presentation on it. It's something that we're looking to possibly bring into Monmouth County. Um, but again, it's an opportunity for all uh, security directors in Monmouth County to kind of get together, um, share ideas and debrief, um, along with the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office and also the local law enforcement from Monmouth County. And we're continuing to um, prioritize our security improvements. We continue to meet on a monthly basis with all of our new approved substitute teachers so they're aware of all of our security procedures that are um, in place. We are in the process of training all of our school security staff on CPR, um, stop and lead, and on a biannual training um, schedule for CPI train, uh, training as well. Um, and you know, conduct biannual reviews. Again, this requires meets with the security staff on a regular basis. Anytime um, either a local, national, or global incident takes place, um, he reviews the information, 
an AD3 and uh, conduct uh, training exercises within the district of how we would address those situations if they occur. So the last slide shows that we are addressing our goal of looking for additional revenue sources. Uh, there's a few things listed on the slide. We are currently looking at proposals. We've been discussing this in the past board meetings for our before and after care program. We currently do not uh, share in any of the revenue uh, from the before and after care program. So we have asked for proposals now that our current contract is ending that would provide for the district to share in some of the revenue that is uh, brought into the district for that. Uh, we are currently evaluating those proposals. We did receive them already, uh, so we are evaluating them and looking to make a recommendation before the end of the year. Uh, we also continue to pursue grants uh, on a district level, and we are doing some right now collaboratively with the township. Uh, we are working on a couple of grants in the area of safety and security, uh, which we will hope bring We'll bring some additional funds into the district to pay for some improvements that we are not able to put into our budget. Another area that we are uh, receiving, going to be receiving additional revenue from, from next year, which is on the slide, we did talk about in our budget presentations, is in the area of transportation. We've uh, been very successful uh, branching out and working with other districts in the area to join transportation routes for students that are going out of the district. Uh, we have done that all along through other entities, other uh, cooperatives at the county level and the regional level. Uh, but we've actually started doing more of it ourselves and we're going to be able to generate some revenue by sharing the, the cost of those routes uh, that will uh, help to pay the cost of transportation. So uh, we've had quite a bit of success with that over the past few months uh, coming out of the next year. So, in conclusion, uh, that is our presentation for our goals for this year. Uh, we are, as we said, in going into the last year of our current strategic plan. Uh, we will be evaluating all of these things as we queue up for the next strategic plan to see you know, which goals we may want to further advance and uh, what our new goals would be. But uh, we hope that this was a helpful presentation. We'll be up on the website. And thank you. If I could just uh, make an announcement at this time, early on the agenda, uh, we, we approved a new district director. Uh, Dr. Michelle Tiedemann is in the office, audience. If you could just come, come around to the front, Michelle, if any of you are really excited, um, we, are, um, we are sad to say goodbye to our good friend, Mr. Dunn, who's moving on with our complete support. And, um, and has done a great job and we're grateful to all his efforts. But we are really excited to work with Dr. Michelle Tiedemann moving forward uh, as the district director. And I just wanted to have, have you have an opportunity to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our committee reports. Uh, technology, Dave Subiak.
second item we have for tonight is a security parent on that. Um, it's an update to an app and, and it's not a piece that we've had in the past year or so. Um, in the past, we've shared parents' insight to their students' online activity. So a parent was able to sign up for this uh, application and receive a weekly summary of uh, what access their student uh, obtained on their device. Um, they also have the ability to log directly into the app on the website and make changes for the personal device at home. Um, now, partnering with partnering security, we have the ability to offer an app that has those features and more. Um, the app actually works in real time, so a parent can see in real time their student, their child's activity, whether they're in school at home. They don't have to wait for the reason to send that uh, email from the um, Two new features on the app, which are, are pretty new, are one is flag activity notification. If a student has a concerning search, uh, has some type of uh, it's flag for self harm or for whatever or not, the parent has the ability to receive a push notification right to the phone when you and what happens. Um, so we won't have to again wait to the end of the week for some of It's all in real time now. Um, the other feature uh, that I'm sure a lot of parents will be happy about is called the internet. Uh, the parents have the ability to keep them just that. They will call the internet on their child's device when they're at home. So you don't want your child to see that you're you want to click on your phone and shut down that Chromebook and you're to make it a little sense. Parents can't close in there, obviously, when the student is in school. Um, and as soon as school, the student returns to school, if the parent has not restored uh, activity, it will automatically restore in there. Uh, I want to report on an NPPS student summer internship. Over the past month, we posted the <coughs> application, we got the applications, we reviewed the applicants, and we held the interviews. Um, and on the 22nd agenda, we will be presenting the students for the 20th a 2019 MPA student internship. Um, we received a larger pool than last year, nearly 40 applicants, all, all very, very good applicants. Um, it was difficult to narrow it down. Um, we have an uh, equal amount from both high schools. Um, we actually have three interns returning from last summer, um, which is nice because they are going to be more or less our senior interns and be able to help out our younger ones because they have a year of their belt. The attorney ones? No, all of them. Uh, out of the eight, there are three seniors, two freshmen, um, I think two juniors and three sophomores. It's just across the whole board, all four grade levels. Um, I do want to bring up again, Wayne Morales mentioned in a presentation about the uh, NTPS Innovation Fair, just extending invitation to all the board members. It is June 10th. Uh, from 4.30 to 6.30 at Phoenix High School North. And the last item I have is a voting agenda item uh, to cool technology purchases. Uh, we have a number of technology purchases that are uh, listed in detail on the agenda. Um, these purchases include these Chromebooks, our people to price refresh, uh, interactive flat panels, our Windows 10 devices, um, software renewal for our website, and backup software renewal. Um, again, they're all in detail on the agenda. Just a, a quick question about the Chromebook purchase. It looks like we're going with Lenovo. Yeah. Is that a, that's the first Lenovo in the district that we have the LHPs before? Yeah, every year we, we bring in vendors and they offer us a, um, demos. And we, we work with them, we share them with the staff members, and we, we choose which one makes the best addition. Then we go out um, all the vendors and, and request bids for our product's best bid um, and has the best product. With this many different vendors, though, in the district, because you, know, you have Dell, HP, Samsung, and Dell, and does that create an issue around parts repairability and things like that? Actually, it does not, because <laughs> most of the parts in the are the same. So the same screen will fit into HP, fit into a Dell, fit into a Um Now, all the are also go into the USB charger, so we don't have a concern about the charger different chargers. Um, and what is nice about the Lenovo is the warranty product. Uh, warranty uh, company vendor is the same one that we have in the ACES, so there will be no change. Very cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to student services. Good evening. Uh, we're going to be recommending 54 students for home instruction. We're going to be recommending 30 to 33 different <coughs> providers to assist with related services such as OT, PT, speech, 
uh, one to one nursing services as well as assisting for um, child study team evaluations and other related services such as teacher of the deaf. We're going to be recommending 12 companies that um, the district usually utilizes for home instruction services for students that are hospitalized or just in general when we need additional supports. I um, also wanted to share um, some information regarding for the voting agenda next week, ESY information. Right now we have about 181 students projected for elementary, about 133 for secondary. Last year elementary we were at about 196 and 141 for elementary. We're going to be recommending at this point 35 teachers. Last year it was 41 related services. Again, we use a combination of district staff um, as well as contract providers that's still up in the air looking at needs. We'll be recommending again two nurses, two secretaries. Uh, right now, uh, we're still going to be looking at higher professionals, both internal and external. Um, we just wanted to update the board on that. Um, also, we had an um, update, um, Ms. Minyu was shared with me earlier regarding a Special Olympics this past weekend um, at the regional track meet. Um, we had 12 students that registered, 10 wound up attending. We won 11 gold medals, 8 silver medals, and 11 bronze. meeting 
Um, if anyone, before next Wednesday, before we vote, if anyone is interested in learning more, I know you all received a summary of all the resources that are being proposed and the resources that are being proposed. If anyone uh, was unable to make it on Monday uh, and they would like further uh, explanation or information, please reach out um, to me and I can certainly accommodate that and our directors and supervisors love to talk about their courses and their content. So they will be more than happy to meet with you before next Wednesday's uh, vote if you have any questions. I just want to start by saying when I was young, school was kind of boring. We sat there and there was a teacher at a podium pontificating. Well, I'm seeing so such engagement now that I wish I were in school again. So there, we went through a lot here. I'll try to be brief. Um, Ms. Picas, please feel free to jump in if I forget anything important. Um, in math, the one that stuck out for me is the um, Algebra 1, Algebra 1 Honors, and Algebra 1 Lab. Um, so they're now extending the Big Ideas program into ninth grade, or whenever they take algebra. And what I like about this is that it incorporates real life applications of math. So there might be a video about why math is important if you're wrapping a present. So, um, also, what I think is really cool that's coming in for math is um, they're now implementing middle school active learning math classrooms. There'll be one in each middle school. So instead of your typical math classroom, you know, standard seating, there'll be flexible seating, offer, um, flexible seating options, whiteboards, areas where kids can kind of move around and solve problems. Um, also, there are these really cool desks with these whiteboards right on the desk so kids can solve problems. In science, um, one thing that really jumped out to me is the human anatomy and physiology honors uh, curriculum. There's a program called, it's an online program called Visible Body. And basically, it's interactive. You can see the inside of muscles. It sounds really interesting. Um, Within technology, the technology department curricula for sixth grade, for all middle school sixth graders um, across the district, they'll be taking a course called Skills for Success in Middle School. And it really emphasizes time management, stress management, and also digital literacy. I just want to add that. Oh, yeah. That's a replacement of um, an existing course, Study Skills. It's a new and improved version to help support uh, our learners of Right. Um, there's also really cool aerospace design and technology for the high school level. And what I really liked about it was the simulation software called Prepare 3D Academic. And uh, we got to kind of look at a little sample. And kids actually um, could do an online simulation, and you really feel like you're on a flight. There's also, um, you know, learning about drones and all kinds of things that kids are interested in today. Lots of other things, photography. Um, I have a question. Oh, sure. The one about aerospace and about the drones. That, that's a totally new course. So it's only one year that you do that? Yes, it's just, it's just one time. That's it's just one time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You realize that that's like the future of the drones. <coughs> Children that don't want to go on to, let's say, a specific college, Drones, they get licenses now, and it became a career now. So one year is going to be enough for them? Well, I mean, as it's now, it's a one-year course, but I mean, moving forward, we can definitely consider it. It continues to grow, so I do foresee the yeah. next rewrite considering a part two, like a level two. We see other jobs coming for our children. I mean, when I found this out, I was like amazed. I found this out from my career, from my work. And finding out that these people have to, you know, have to be licensed now, really, with the drones and how they use it, of course, with police work and different, but it doesn't mean you're a cop, it doesn't mean you're an FBI, it's just they fire you because you're a professional like this. So, what are the jobs? You see? And, that, and it's amazing because that's why we're so focused, I think, on the STEM here, is that every day with new technology, we're seeing new careers being born. It's, it's, and we're trying yeah. to keep up with this. Very exciting. We're starting robotics classes, the gaming classes, the photography, um, 
advanced. They gave, they gave me classes, yeah, because everything I, I, I had five years ago. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. And talk about keeping students engaged. I mean, those classes yeah. sound so great. Um, one big item is the revised social studies curriculum for the middle school. So this affects a very large population. All sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students um, will be affected by this uh, revised curriculum. It incorporates the new New Jersey standards for financial literacy. Basically, the state mandates that we cover six standards throughout middle school. Well, we choose in middle school, I guess. But anyway, uh, six standards, and we can kind of choose where they go. A new curriculum is very student-centered, and there's an emphasis on inquiry-based learning and problem-solving, very much unlike social studies when I was a kid, when we just sat there and had to memorize dates and, and dead people and, and all that. So <laughs> that, that's what it was when I was a um, kid. And there, of course, there are many other courses here, but um, for the revised fine, new fine performing and practical arts department, um, Mr. Graziano already talked about the dance, the dance component, so that's very exciting. Um, and in English, they uh, this was discussed earlier um, in the student success portion, but they revised the English language arts department curriculum for ninth and tenth grade, starting with a new name for the course where it used to be, let's say, American Lit. Now it'll just be called ninth grade English. Um, and what I really liked about it is that rather than studying all the same core novels, instead there might be one core novel that the, that the class does together, but there's a lot more choice. Basically the idea is to create lifelong readers um, and for kids to read a lot and um, different genres. There'll be book clubs, um, a lot of choice, so I really liked that. Um, and they also revised the kindergarten to fifth grade language arts curriculum. Um, again, a lot of choice, um, whole class lessons, small group, one-on-one -on -one conferencing. So there's a lot to be excited about in the world of curriculums. <laughs> I have a few questions. On the um, arts academy, how many kids have signed up and how many kids are from high school south? Oh, I'm not aware. Maybe you visit. Next year, you know, for, for both grades, I believe it's 73 students will be enrolled in the oh, arts that's academy. Collectively. Collectively, yeah, for, yeah, for, for the freshmen and sophomores. Six and 11 students um, are from the South Central District that have been accepted for next year. And we keep us um, informed in September if those 11 students actually come Absolutely. over. Because I know last year we had a bunch, and by the time people started, we didn't have them anymore. Yes, for sure. And then we picked up some along yeah. the way. So it was good. Not and we actually yeah. had, this is a, this yeah. is a uh, larger number. And we actually had some current students who are ninth readers in South um, who are coming over. One actually was coming over from dance. And one from art, actually. So one current ninth grader that was going into 10 is now transferring to one. So they're doing a dance academy. They have to come to North. Yes. Yes. The other thing um, I have a comment on is the STEM clubs after school. I hope we're keeping an eye on them for attendance wise and for things that they're doing there to keep the interest of the kids because like you say, things are changing. Um, it seems like we could be losing some kids but they're not really attending those clubs so maybe we need to um, do something to engage them to get them back in and get their interest going with everything that's changing. I mean, I definitely would hope that we're looking at the attendance of them because it's, it's a good club. I think that um, it's something that our kids should be involved in. But if they're not being offered something to make them want to come, they're not going to come. Um, I can speak for a STEM club in another district. Um, I run robotics in the STEM clubs after school. And attendance is great then sometimes in the fall and in the spring, certain times when sports start. There are just too many things for kids to do. So that could be part of 
the um, declining attendance? No, I'm not really what, what I'm getting at. But okay. I mean, that's your district. I'm concerned about Middletown. Mm -hmm. Well, we have sports in Middletown. And um, I'm not worried about sports. I'm worried about what we're offering in clubs that are going to keep the kids wanting to come. You because so they're not coming after school and there's nothing really going on. So they leave and they go someplace else or do something else. You know, I think it's, it's important that we keep that kind of a club, but I really would like to make sure that we're doing what's right for the kids during that time because we are paying stipends and we are trying to get the kids engaged in this kind of stuff. So we want to make sure they're doing something. There is an oversight over all clubs and um, the, uh, the building level administrators and also um, Mrs. Walker, Assistant Superintendent, review um, those, um, you know, the attendance and all those things, and the principals review that to make recommendations from year to year on which clubs are best attended and most viable. So I agree, attendance is really important, and our administrative team is absolutely um, aware of that and reviews that and supervises that. I have a question. Hmm. On the and construction and fashion and um, fashion and home decor and sewing and fashion. Are these new? No, no I mean, they're, 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 they're revisions. They're all revisions. Of, all of them. Yep. I'm glad that this is I was trying to listen to the, the whole list, so that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Well, no, no, because no, I couldn't tell what was new as we scared. We printed it out, we're looking at it, because I could not get it. Yeah. <coughs> they're revisions. I wish I was there. I would have loved to have heard everything. If you have any follow-up questions, please call. No, it's exciting yeah. about kids. It's really very exciting. For tomorrow's teachers class. I mean, like, it's a lot of it. Is a, lot of a lot of work. A lot of work. I wish put some of this a little bit down as far as in like middle school and like personally, like that thing that had us be successful in middle school. In a way, I wish they had that in the fifth grade. But look at what it is. So the kids do. So they're they're not taking a class on how to be successful every other day. Oh, I, I think I, I think the the fifth grade teachers are doing that a lot of organizational skills, study skills related to fifth grade. Um, I think just the nature of the schedule of sixth grade creates some difference in, okay. in the day for students. So it lends itself um, for a time to give them additional support. But I totally agree, and, and that's something that our teachers are always addressing. Very exciting. And we're always looking to grow our middle school electives, and that's something that's on our radar. I see them all shaking their heads. So <laughs> very, very exciting. Beautiful. Thing. I have a question about the, at the honors academy. The um, or, I'm sorry, the arts academy. The honors course um, in animation is that something that you have to attend the academy? We don't have that at South. You have to. Do you want to address that somewhere else? Sure. Yes, it's only offered at North, but it is open to North students if they have taken graphic design and have been in the class. So this coming year, there will be several students who are not Academy students because we will not fill that class the first year. Okay. Now by next year, it may fill because we'll have over 20 digital media students. Great. Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you for putting all the information on the portal. I sat in the comfort of my own home and went through it all. And called this is still like 100 questions. It was good. Thank you. Are there any other ones with facilities finance? Couple of information items for the board. Uh, we have started organizing all of our summer work. Uh, we have projects going on in each building. <coughs>
auditorium uh, lighting and sound bid. Uh, we did open that bid on Friday. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we received three bids and they were all in excess of what the budget was. We had budgeted four hundred thousand dollars in this year's budget for this project. Uh, the lowest bid came in at six hundred and sixty-seven thousand for the base bid. Uh, we also put an alternate in for an option for the, uh, to upgrade the house lighting as we're talking with the uh, staff over there and looking just to see if you know that was something that would be doable. Uh, so that's not a required part of it, but that was something we were trying to get pricing on also. Uh, we had bids ranging from uh, 667000 uh, up to $1.2 million for this project. Uh, we were very disappointed. Uh, we had talked to the architect before this went out to bid. Uh, they all felt the, the scope of work that we had put in out would fit within our budget. Uh, apparently, it, it didn't. The two bids that came in were pretty close, so that gives you some idea that that's probably about you know, what the work is worth. Um, 1.2 million being an outlier. Um, I did speak to the architect today. Uh, he was going to speak to the specialist that the consultants that were working with him. Uh, so there's a few things we could do to scale down the project that wouldn't have a major impact, but it's also not going to be the impact on the cost either. So um, we are continuing to look at it. They were, a little, they were surprised as well. Um, at this point, you know, our choices would be to kind of change the scope of the project that we did, uh, which would take a little bit of time and uh, likely would not be able to get done during the summer months because you know, we have an impact the time frame for this to not try to go to uh, The other option would be to evaluate and see whether, you know, it would be possible to find a cost of the project in the whole of the that we have budgeted. Uh, that, you know, we have not evaluated yet. Uh, we don't have funds budgeted to get to this project. It would be you know, something to be reallocated. But you know, as of right now, um, you know, we're still looking at the possibilities. But you know, it's likely that we're going to have to reject these bids uh, at next week's meeting. And we might want to put a pun out there to go back to the farm board and see what we can do. Didn't we have this problem when we did south too? We ended up spending a lot we, more money. It wasn't a lot more. It did come in more than what we'd estimated. If my recollection is we'd estimated about 160 or 170,000 for the lighting project there. It came in a little over 200. So it was over, uh, but not this not this magnitude. So um, we have not had a chance to really sort out exactly to do, but at this point it doesn't fit with the budget that we have, which we are really disappointed about. We're going to continue to talk to the architect and see if there's things that we can do to get this budget, um, but again, that would have to be redid. You can't just pick and choose what we do out of the space, so that's the that's thing. Is there architects? So we will, we will continue to Well, we can't, you can't change a bid. When you have yeah, a bid with a specific okay. specification, you can't say, we well, can't just change that to change that without really giving the opportunity to go back to the bid. Yes. So it's, we can't allow that to do that. Um, we will have two other bids that we're opening tomorrow uh, that will be on the agenda for next week. Uh, they are regular, regular fencing and masonry bids that we, that we utilize uh, throughout the year. Uh, we usually do a one-year bid with a one-year option uh, sort of to stay on the cycle. So we have not opened those bids. We're opening them tomorrow. And then we'll have them on the agenda. Uh, so that's all we have for finance. The only other, well, the only other thing is some of the finance uh, I mean, facilities and technology is uh, we are also going to be looking to put the purchases that we budgeted for from TV studios uh, like the next month so that that work can start uh, over the summer and, and move forward. So uh, we are just finalizing that uh, and hopefully we'll have one new next week. What was the cost that we put aside for that? I knew you were going to ask me that. I forgot to write that down. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I believe it was um, a whole new to the dollar. $127,000 for both schools, but um, it, the budget number that we had was a good number because we were not like, all spec out or cooperative, so it's not going to be a situation where we're getting a price that's what we budgeted. What we budgeted is what it's going to be. So, I can email you that tomorrow. I'm just, you know, I, 
Yeah, that covers all phases. Yeah. 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 Yeah
feedback yet, but it's very similar to the schedule we did last year as far as percentages of funds that we gave. So I don't anticipate uh, there being change, but you know, as a courtesy, you know, we work together to come up with a schedule. Make sure that at least you have a nice cash flow. We have transportation renewals and transportation bids that are going on the agenda. Uh, we just have to read this amounts this year that contractors return to us. So you know, we do look to renew when possible because we're going to that CPI as far as the increase goes. The contractors are not down to renew it. So we did have some amounts that returned to us that they did not want to do. Uh, basically, you know, for lack of an uh, explanation for that price, they don't want to, they didn't want to put it back down to it. So we had to uh, finish that process and evaluate everything. Um, we, we don't have a final accounting because we're still in the process of bidding out. Some of them are coming higher, some of them are coming lower. And we had other things, you know, that we wanted to do so that we're saving us money. So when we get done with bidding out and renewing all of the routes, you know, like I normally do, I can give you an overview of where to stand versus next year. Um, we also have bus evacuation drills on the agenda that we're required to do uh, twice a year. And that would be encouraging this month for the board to approve. Thank you. Student activities. Uh, for each 
two teams that combine your staff team with one voice to another voice team. So they want to revise the structure, which would then lower the cost and, uh, of course, retain the data that have to be made to the board. So um, you know, they have proposed that. We did receive their first payment was due May 8th or 9th. And they did give us uh, a partial payment on that. Uh, they are looking to give the remainder of the payment within a 14 day grace period uh, that's provided in the contract that they are looking to uh, do the lower amount. So I don't know if you know, we've discussed it as an as administrative team and uh, with Mr. Powell, and I don't think we make this really objection from a time standpoint to reduce the scale of the program. Uh, so um, everybody in the room felt that was maybe a little bit <coughs> uh, 
Uh, so uh, the cash agrees with us that they go talk to the library board, uh, trying to find a way around that. Everybody agrees and then you know, ties in nicely with the curriculum. Uh, that we want the readers, we want them to be young age, uh, we want them to be engaged um, as, as much as possible. We also talked about alternate ways to pay fines, such as uh, doing donations, uh, food drives, quick drives, whatever, to uh, compensate for any fines that are So that was a very productive discussion. Finally, um, it's been a topic, uh, a couple of meetings now, uh, traffic at Thompson, particularly the intersection at Middletown Lincroft with the white and nuts. Um, that is a fairly treacherous uh, intersection, and then you add in um, uh, dismissal and uh, arrival traffic at both Thompson and that's one that doesn't become sort of untenable. The county is looking at this, um, they to make improvements. Uh, they did come and speak to us as board last year. Um, the township let us know that the county is moving forward with some plans here. As they become firmed up, uh, we'll be kept in the loop with that as well, but that is where we're going. Uh, so that's it for short sure. Thank you. All right. And on to strategic planning. Um, we have a strategic planning group now. We have the Princeton Public Affairs Group. So congratulations to them. And we look forward to working with them. Excited about that. Um, we're also excited to be working with the members of PIC and the President's Council um, who have offered to keep in contact with us all summer. Um, and get feedback from their PTAs um, and PFAs about uh, what parts of the strategic plan we want to focus on um, in the future. So I'm really excited, really positive about it. Um, I was going to say if John wanted to add anything. Um, anyone else want to add anything about the strategic plan? One, one thing I would add, um, I was at the uh, Little Town South PFA meeting last night and um, made a pitch to that group. And I think it's important, I know all of us have our schools that we've uh, sort of adopted. Uh, this year and the, the PFA PTA calendars are winding down so any opportunity we get to get in front of those groups of parents is an opportunity to advise them that strategic planning is on the way uh, that they should be looking for invitations to meetings and sessions uh, and that we're really looking to them to participate with us if they really want to see the community. Uh, it was fairly well received. It's a harder sell at the high schools uh, because high school parents sort of get detached uh, the push that we were making there was that they have long memories, they have kids who've been here for years, they have opinions about the direction they want people to go in, so uh, their, their opinion is as valuable as the elementary or middle school parents. And even something you could reach out to in an email or something. I know both of my adopted schools are having their meetings tonight, so I can't be there, but I can email them. Yep. I go through everybody as well. What is the next step now that you hired Princeton? When do they um, meet with the board and let us know, like, one of the things they talked about was how they plan to get the public engaged. So that's really what we need to get out to the, the groups and the community. So what's the next step on that? Well, the next step will be tomorrow. We will reach out to them and let them know that they've been appointed. And I know in your proposals, you're going to lay out uh, timelines that they would be starting to move before a short time frame. So we'll speak to them tomorrow. I'm sure that they will start formulating the communication to the board to get things up and running. one of the topics that they discussed was they were going to come up with a plan on how to do this. So when people are asking us how it's going to go, we really can't speak on that because it's really up to the company to direct us how they plan to go about it. I think we're, I mean, to say that we're at the beginning steps is an overstatement because they literally haven't been told that they're hired yet. So <laughs> I, I, I think we've got a, another month or so of, of discussion with them. You have to get them here. We have to see what their plan is going to be. So I, I, everything you said, I agree with 100%, but I think that it's, I think to set anybody in the public's expectation that we're doing something about this, that we're doing something about this in the short term. I think this meeting, I think we need everybody to start just the process that's at the ground floor and over the summer to start looking for communication. I think that's appropriate. Well, that's why I asked the question. I need for us to do something, but I know that um, President's Council reached out and they wanted an update, and I suggested to Pam it's really not appropriate for us to go there and give a plan because it's going to be the company's plan. So um, we can ask 
plan for an action plan. Yeah, um, and it's going to take time. I don't think it's by Monday. I mean, that no, was amazing. They're not going to get done by Monday. And I know that, but that's what I'm saying. So it's going to take time. It's going to take over the summer. Mm -hmm. But I think some people are really impressed with that. It's going to happen uh, tomorrow, and, and it's not. And that we have to plan, and we really don't get it. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's all trying to get out there. Well, I would say based upon the timelines that we discussed during the discussions with the board, then you know, it will be sooner rather than later. And whatever they ask for from our administration team to get them up and running, I mean, one the first thing I can do is look at our existing plan and everything else. Where is just from a practical perspective, I mean, we're obviously yeah. having people in the county and the other side of the that the key thing is going to be running out of dates and so put them in our calendars and then get there. Well, I will discuss with them, you know, what our board meetings are over the next couple of months, so if I have something to do, we can do that. That would be perfect. Okay, I do. Thank you. Um, so moving on to old business. Okay, no openness. Uh, moving on to new business. I just want one thing. Um, it was nice to see that our North and South Lacrosse team boy played at Met Stadium, but I never got the answer. Who paid for that? Was it the lacrosse group or was it the district that paid for that money? I never did get that answer. Cost that life other than the buses, we would have, for the teams to go, we would have paid for the buses to go. There was a cost to spectators, um, and the spectators paid that. Uh, the best of my knowledge, there was not a cost to the teams. Okay, so my, so my last question is on the website, it said that all the proceeds went to high school staff or cross team. Why did it only go to one and not split between both? I'm just going by what the website said. We'll, um, we'll investigate that. Um, I mean, we're going to both on bond. I just want to make sure it's equitable. Yeah. I, 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 wish, I wish I knew that question. Do you have a member of the committee? I did, I did say that. I, I said that question. I believe my ticket said that the proceeds went to the Middletown North Lacrosse team yeah. for, the, for our website for buying tickets. Yeah. So well, I, I believe it went to both so. schools. Yeah, so just went depending, on, school, um, depending, depending on who you bought for. Okay. Each school had their individual link. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank well, you. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Yeah. I just have one thing I want to add. Um, so on May 3rd, I got to see Ford on this Ear to Reach show. Um, it was really great. It was Wild Wild West in a town that was played with millions and millions and millions of rats. Um, but it was wonderful. I brought my seven-year-old son and, you know, usually halfway through some of these shows, it really kind of loses his attention and he loved every minute of it. In fact, actually, he keeps talking about it um, so much so that for the first time, he's actually thinking about participating in Theater Week next year at Baby, um, which he has not wanted to do yet. So this really inspired him. Um, and one of the greatest things, I think, for me and clearly for all of the parents and family members in the audience was just the pure joy of watching all of these kids up on stage. They only practiced for one week, you know, maybe two hours, hour and a half, um, but the job that they did was phenomenal. And the director, you know, that they brought in, unfortunately I can't remember her name, but you know, clearly she loves what she does and it just comes through the excitement you know, she has been working with it. So I really enjoyed that, so thank you. Um, and we are one week away from a very exciting event, the Leonardo <laughs> Elementary Fundraiser, um, where teachers and a couple parents and myself uh, will be playing against the Harlem Wizards right here at High School North next Wednesday, starting at 7 o'clock. I know there's a competing uh, board meeting that night, but remember, the public portion doesn't start until 8. So you can come at seven to watch us play. You know, my son keeps telling me after he watches the promotional video that I'm never going to score a basket. He's probably right, <laughs> but it'll be for a good cause. So I hope everybody can come. Thank you. I have something. So um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and I got a lot of feedback from teachers all over Middletown. Not only is it 
most teachers' favorite week of the year, but the PFAs organize such great events for the teachers. So, you know, just a shout out right there to teachers and for the <coughs> PFAs who organize such great things for them. Thank you. Thank you. The other, the other good thing about that is a lot of the schools emphasize staff appreciation. So nobody is left out. And then I think that that's something we're going to see a lot more in the future. <coughs> I went to the Food Truck Festival at High School South last Friday and it was so much fun. They had all these games out there uh, on the football field at High School South and you didn't have to pay for any of it. And as someone with two children, you have to pay for everything when you go to a carnival like that. So I was um, excited that they had these free games for my child to play. It was so fun. And then we bought our uh, food and our ice cream and it was really great to see the bands too. They had some rock bands. Um, with kids from High School South and High School North, and I believe they were alumnus as well. And um, I sing in a cover band, so I thought that was really cool to watch these kids up there. Just, um, I know how much joy it brings me, so it was just nice to see these young kids having so much fun up there. That was great. Anybody else, new visuals? All right. I would like to open up the microphone for public comment. Thank you so much for waiting so long. Um, we do have a limit to three minutes each. So please come on up. Thank you. Dr. George, Ford, my name is Bill Summers, and what's the fall of our three young children under Mr. Ferry's uh, building in the set of Mount Dollar neighborhood. I said, um, I wrote this letter last night in distress about what's going on with my last in. I'm going to put this letter down here and I have to speak to everybody from the heart. I've known my blessing for five years. I've had a lot of engineering within his family um, regarding my birthday parties, outside events, and a great guy. And there's one thing that I have to say about my blessing that I think everybody in this room could appreciate. My blessing brings value not only to his wife, his children, but to the new model community and the old town township in itself. And with that being said, I really think that this board should just revamp and look at the people that are speaking on the part of that to grant this man tenure. And that's all I really have to say, but this man brings absolute value to this community. Thank you.
smile, and you damn know it, he gets that kid on the ice, and that kid smiles, and Mike smiles. That shows the trust and respect that these kids have for Coach West. Another is a few instances of how Mike is genuine and caring that I can explain to you is my son told here previously about playing hockey. Well, as he mentioned, he broke his collarbone a couple of times. Each time, Mike was, the, Mike was the very first person to contact me. But more importantly, he wasn't the only the first person to contact me. He kept in touch with my son. Weekly. How are you doing? How can I help? John, don't worry, we're gonna get you back on the ice, because he knew that that was the most important thing to my son at that time. I've been involved in sports for 40 years. I've never had a coach that ever done something like that for me. Excuse me, sir, sorry to interrupt you, but you have three minutes to up. Yeah. I'll wait four hours and that's what I get, thank you. Children. No teacher, 
that I would rather trust in shaping my kids' characters than Michael Lesson. You should really examine Mr. Lesson's performance, certainly. But more importantly, examine his integrity, his kind spirit, and his heart. And if all of those things were accurately evaluated, I, as every other parent and child that is here to support him, believe that Mr. Lesson would be back for the 2019-20 school year and well beyond that. Thank you. consistency 
and to take those things away from them to me would be a travesty. Thank you for your time. I'm 
I am brand new to just the public school in general. I came from a Catholic school myself in the Street. Um, I'm a teacher there as well, so I am an outsider coming in. And I only can speak to you about the surrogacy through the eyes of my children, who are in kindergarten and third grade. And he does something called Love with Warriors every morning, and he's the reason that my children get out of bed, actually out of bed, um, every Wednesday and Friday, on time, um, without us having to do our Love Day. Let's go. Um, and also, they they don't really talk about their day. It's like, well, how was your day? I was fine. What did you do? I went outside for recess. They always tell me about gym. They always tell me about health. No offense to math or science, but they really don't care about that. Um, so as kind of like a newbie coming in from a completely different world in private school, um, the love that everybody has for them is pretty outstanding. Um, and just the rallying behind them has been pretty amazing. And I completely understand budgets, and I completely understand tenure. I get it, um, but I'm just hoping that there's just a teeny tiny little bit of hope that for two years while she was at Newmont. We've been advised that Mr. Alessi will not be returning to Newmont in September. This is very upsetting to us as a family and as a school community. Mr. Alessi is one of the best teachers that Newmont has. Had. All of the children love him and are so excited when they have gym or health at school. The kids have such a great time with him, he makes things fun as well as educational. Mr. Alessi goes above and beyond his title. He serves as our crossing guard in our parking lot for the morning drop-off, making sure that the kids are getting into school safely. He greets everyone with a warm good morning and a smile. Whatever we ask him to do, even be in our dunk tank at fun day, he always answers with a yes because he does it for the kids. He's always visible at any events that the school has after hours. He's attended our welcome back picnic, our color run. He's participated in our fifth grade versus staff basketball game for several years. He even showed up to our fifth grade car wash this past Saturday to support our students, which was two days after he received his pink slip. He continues to be there for the children, even when he's been given notice that he will not be returning. He's been entirely dedicated to the children of New Mammoth, and they love him. Please do not remove him from our school. He would be doing such a disservice to the children, to his fellow faculty members, and to the New Mammoth community as a whole. 
Please reconsider your decision and keep Mr. Alessi in our school. Thank you. welcome to email us um, about your concerns. We really appreciate hearing from all of you. And just all of you being here, it's just, it just speaks volumes. Um, I need a motion to adjourn to go into executive session for matters of uh, non bargaining contracts. Even I start to get a little like, oh.